By the 15th century of the modern era, Islam had spread into Balkan Europe. Though the lands around the city of Constantinople were inhabited by the new European Muslims of the Ottoman Empire, the city itself was still the capital of Byzantium. To have this strongly fortified city in the middle of Ottoman lands was a grave threat because it became an outpost for crusader armies seeking the destruction of the Muslims. In addition to being an instigator in these crusades, the Byzantine Emperor Constantine XI also oppressed his own people with cruelty and injustice. In the year 1422, the Ottoman Sultan Murad II laid siege to Constantinople in a failed effort to open the city and liberate its people. It was not until the rule of Murad's son, Sultan Muhammad II, 30 years later, that Constantinople fell thus fulfilling the promise of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the Muslims. You shall conquer Constantinople, and indeed the best of rulers will be its ruler, and the best of armies will be that army. Intruder. Who are you? What do you think you're doing? Let's get him. Prepare to die. He's all mine. Ah! And you? Ben man, I was starting to fall asleep. <laughs> sleep? Who cares if you sleep? <laughs> Don't you see these great walls? Do we really need to guard the city after fortifying it like this? I didn't expect you to return so quickly. Have you completed your mission? Yes, I have. What do you think Sultan Mohammed will do with these specimens? He'll know what to do. We've done our job. 
Let's go. Yes. Huh. Huh. Constantinople continued to disintegrate and decay. Fewer and fewer ships frequented its ports, and commerce steadily diminished. Its ruler, the Emperor Constantine, no longer cared about the welfare of his people. His only ambition was to force them into paying more taxes. His soldiers, who were cruel and showed no mercy, carried out these orders. Eventually, Constantinople's streets became crowded with the beggars, the poor, and the needy. my friend welcome Aristo I didn't recognize you oh. Oh. empty shells nothing to sell looks like you're going out of business after we pay all our taxes to the Emperor who in this miserable city is not going out of business <laughs> Well done, Alexei. I see tax collection is going well so far, but we need even more, Alexei, more. But my lord, we have already taken all the wealth from the people. <laughs> <laughs> then it is time to build a great palace. Prepare to lay the foundation. We will begin tomorrow, Alexei. It is impossible, my lord. We don't own enough slaves for such a great task. I thought you smarter than that, Alexei. Don't you see the poor wretches on the streets of our Constantinople? They are all slaves. Why do I keep you around, Alexei? Forgive me, sir. I was wrong. I made a mistake. I will do as you command immediately. <laughs> Stand up, Alexei. Stand up. Start the work, but don't rush through it. I want this to be a great palace. Listen carefully. You must pay the taxes if you want to live in this city. Remember how the Emperor and his soldiers defended you from the enemy. It is best you come forward with the taxes, or else you shall take it by force. Across the Sea of Marmara, communities lived in peace and security under the rule of Sultan Murad II. He was a just Muslim ruler who had heard about the oppression and decay taking place in Constantinople. Murad often prayed to Allah to help him in liberating the people of that city and in establishing the justice of Islam within its walls.
After many years of rule and many battles defending the Muslims against the Crusaders, Sultan Murad wanted to step down. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam Muhammad. I have finished reading the third volume, sir. Then you didn't sleep last night. Yes, I slept, but I woke up early this morning. So, will you allow me to take the fourth volume? You may do that, Muhammad. It is in my study. Thank you, sir. It seems that Muhammad has forgotten the sword and horsemanship. He only cares about his books. Don't worry, my dear friend. Books won't make him forget the sword, and the coming days will prove that. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. What is the news of my son Muhammad? How is his studying progressing? Oh, Sultan Murad, we were just discussing Muhammad's attention to his books and training, sir. Since you have looked into this, I would like you to know that I've made an important decision. It is the most important decision I have ever taken in my life. Since the existence of our nation depends on it, I have thought much about it before deciding. I am certain this is the best course of action for our nation. I will abdicate my throne to my son, Muhammad, from this day onwards. The problems of the world which have no end have worn me out. And for worshipping, you must stand by my son and help him by whatever means possible. But, Sultan, how can you do this? Ah, that will be all, Khalil Pasha. I transfer to you, my son the sword, the throne, and a proud legacy of upholding the trust of those we govern. Now it is you, Muhammad, who must remain faithful to that trust and strive to establish peace and justice throughout the lands. Who could imagine that Sultan Murad would take a decision such as this? We ask Allah that this will be the best for our nation. How will it be to the advantage of our nation if our noble leader leaves his throne for an inexperienced child? The danger also concerns me. How could the throne of this mighty empire be left to a child? Sultan Mara's name alone scares our enemies. It's best if he stays. You must have heard the news that Sultan Muhammad has inherited the throne from his father. Yes, we have. Do any of you have any questions? Will he be able to conduct the affairs of the Muslims? <sighs> Inshallah. Inshallah. Khalil Pasha, I know Muhammad very well since he is my student. He is intelligent and determined. I am confident that if we help him, he will fill the place of his father within a short time. Sheikh Shamsuddin, you may be thinking this way, but the enemy is not. They will not pass up this opportunity to strike at us. When can we attack? For many years we have tried to unite the Crusaders and have failed. Indeed, Sultan Murad has defeated us in several battles. But we mustn't give up. We must prepare and be ready to attack. Sultan Murad has grown old. Soon we may even hear of his death. <laughs> A message from Constantine that Sultan Murad has abdicated for his son, Mohammed. Ah, wonderful. It's as good as if Sultan Murad had died. Don't you see? My analysis has proved correct. The time has come for us to mobilize our armies and destroy the Ottomans. Oh, Sultan Muhammad, we all agree with you. It would be best if Sultan Murad returns to lead the army against the many threats to our nation. 
If we are in agreement, then it is resolved. We all support this idea, and we all agree that no one has the right to expose our nation to danger and destruction. How can I convince my father to return quickly to lead the Ottoman armies? Summon my scribe. We have called on you before to lead the country and its army. We appeal to you again, this time for the following reasons. The situation is extremely dangerous. And finally, I say to you, if you are the Sultan, then you have to come and lead your army and lead your country. And if I am the Sultan, then I command you to come immediately to lead the army. My son, Muhammad, has put me in a difficult position. There is nothing I can do but obey. The Crusaders laid siege to the Ottoman city of Varna, so the Muslim armies made preparations to confront their enemy and break the siege, and they set forth to raise high the banner of Islam. Many lands were crossed, until finally, the two armies met. The battle raged between the Muslims and the Crusaders, and it ended with the defeat of the Crusaders and victory for the Muslims. After this battle, Sultan Murad continued his victories over the Crusaders until his death in 1451. By that time, Sultan Muhammad was a young, active, strong, and intelligent young man. So he occupied the throne of the state for the second time. Let us begin with the dua for those who have been martyred and the recitation of the Surah Fatiha. <laughs> been of great assistance to my father. May the mercy of Allah be upon him. You are the true pillars of the Ottoman nation. My friends, I do not need to introduce you to one another. For years we have struggled together and have become guardians of this great state, this nation deeply rooted in faith and tradition. We have engaged in fierce battles and together, with the help of Allah, we have overcome countless challenges. In this manner did our forefathers struggle and pass this nation on to us. 
The burden is now upon our shoulders, and only with faith and character will we persevere. For many years we have defended ourselves against crusading armies, but we can no longer merely react to the aggression of our enemies. Instead, we must with wisdom anticipate their plotting and act first before we fall victim to their ceaseless treachery. We must be relentless to establish justice throughout the land and I ask Allah with his grace to help me achieve these dreams of my father. We must work hard to spread the word of God and establish the true faith with firm determination and steadfast hearts. Remember, victory comes only from Allah. Sorry, Master. Uh, I was filing this long nail. You stupid fool. You were filing away my finger. Oh, sir, you can't go in there. Sir, wait, stop. Greetings, my exalted Emperor. Alexei, what is the matter with you? How dare you enter like that without permission? I have some news for you. Speak? Is it bad news? <laughs> Can't you read the news from the expression on my face? Mm, it seems as if you are bearing good news for me, Alexei. Tell me, tell me! The old wolf has died, sir. Which wolf? I mean the Sultan Murad. <laughs> oh, wonderful! <laughs> Shh! And he was old, but what else? Has his son Muhammad taken his throne? Yes, the child has. He is probably no longer a child. If you had informed me of the death of Muhammad, my happiness would have been greater. Murad became old and feeble. I believe Muhammad will now attempt what his father attempted when he was 18 years old. But Muhammad too will return with his army defeated. What did Murad do when he was 18? He laid siege on Constantinople for 50 days. Rest assured, my master, Murad has died, and Muhammad is still a child with little experience. <laughs> yes, you are correct. At this time, some Muslims lived within Constantinople. These men worked to gather information for the Sultan. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, alaikum assalam, Bahadir. Please be seated. <sighs> I have good news, Koros Dada. I have become a gardener in the palace. <laughs> Wonderful. The emperor will be happy with his garden. Yes, the emperor appoints a gardener to his palace, and he doesn't know he is an Ottoman officer. Constantinople is strengthening its relations with Venice. We were just discussing our concern on this very subject. Ships sail frequently between their two ports. Also, the number of emissaries going to Serbia has increased, and so have delegations bearing gifts to them. But we still don't know the reason for this. The reason is clear. They are uniting to fight against us. Then you must go to the Sultan on Friday. But first, we must gather more information. Suleiman, you will take care of this task. Zagnosh Pasha. How do you explain the contradictory information that is reaching us? On one hand, we hear that Constantine does not take me seriously and thinks that I am inexperienced. 
But on the other hand, Suleiman now informs us that the people of Constantinople are busy building its walls without rest or sleep. All these reports lead me to one conclusion. A crusader army is uniting to fight against us. And that must be why Constantine is fortifying his defenses. Oh, Sultan, the people of Constantinople are baffled by you. They are unsure of what you can do. Ah. Halil Pasha, I see my Sheikh Shamsuddin standing outside. Go and honor him. It upsets me when you keep him waiting. As you wish. And what else, Suleiman? Do you have more to inform us? The Emperor Constantine intends to marry a relative of the King of Serbia. Don't you see? Constantine wants to secure the help of the Serbs. I think he's planning to fight us. What do you think? Ooh. Your tea, sir. Thank you, son. Uh, welcome, welcome, Sheikh Shamsuddin, the most beloved teacher of the Sultan. <laughs> it is such an honor for us to see you. Oh, 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 you are embarrassing me with your flattery. <laughs> Don't say that. The Sultan is always proud of you. May Allah bless him and his government. I mean, please, have a seat. How is, uh, how is your health these days? And praise be to Allah, I'm well. You have been traveling around the nation, Sheikh. Tell us what has been happening. What is the feeling of the people? I cannot hide from you that the news is not pleasing. The tribe of Karaman Olu is moving its troops to our border in the south. Oh, they are busy building up their forces. Oh, my, it is a shame. The disunity Karaman Olu is causing. We are trying to keep alarm from spreading, but bad news travels fast, and Byzantine armies are gathering around Constantinople, and the Venetians have taken control of some strategic waterways, which compromise our security. I don't understand the mind of the Sultan. Is he really prepared to take us into battle with the Byzantines and expose us to new attacks from the Crusaders? Halil Pasha, you must realize that all these calamities are instigated by Constantine and his plotting. Yes, Sultan, you are right. But maybe it's better if we deal gently with Constantine's messenger. Huh? Send in the messenger. The messenger from Constantine! Your Majesty. Get up. Get up. I know you have come regarding the fees we pay you to imprison my rebellious Uncle Oran. After the death of my father, these fees were suddenly increased to 300,000 gold pieces. Frankly, I am extremely dissatisfied with that. It seems the older my uncle becomes, the more expensive he becomes. We will review Constantine's offer. Be gone. What is that racket, Halil Pasha? I will investigate something. State laborers, sir. They want bonuses. Not to worry, Sultan. It is the laborers of the state. They want bonuses to celebrate your ascension to the throne. Is this any way to ask for a bonus? Tell them to disperse immediately. Do not shout. Be quiet. You have bothered the Sultan. You must disperse. How can they behave? How dare they be so bold? They are persistent and refuse to give up. Is that so? Tell them I will not mistreat them. Give them what they need now and send them away. Don't you see, Prime Minister? Chaos and turmoil are everywhere. 
both from within and without. Oh, Habil Pasha, what can be the cause of these challenges? You know more about it, O Sultan. Is it because of my abdication of the throne when I was a child? Or am I so weak that I am not fit to rule? Oh, far from it, Master. Then, Prime Minister, how can we bring this turmoil to an end? I feel, my master, that we should arrange these problems according to their importance and gravity, then we deal with them one by one. And spend my whole life just mediating these problems? No, Emil Pasha. Nothing but strength will suffice for the dissenters, both from within and without. I will show them an iron fist. Only then will our problems disappear. Call the elders of the country together. I want to have a meeting with them at the earliest opportunity. Master, our messenger has returned from the tribe of Kalaman Olu. How did they react to our message? Kalaman Olu has listened and has begun to attack southern Ottoman cities. Hmm. Sultan Muhammad's young age has made it easier to instigate trouble for him from within. True. By the way, have we sent a message to Aquanito? No. Then, send a message to him immediately. And to mention that Karaman Olu is rebelling, maybe this will encourage Aquanito to rebel as well. Yes, Majesty. As leaders of our people, we are burdened with the trust of protecting their lives and their land. We will answer for any oppression that we allow to come to them. Time and again, we have trusted the Byzantines. But our history has shown us that they will never rest in their battle against us. Remember when I became Sultan as a boy, a crusade was gathered by Constantine, but my father defeated them. His death started Constantine plotting with Serbia and Venice. If we wait, they'll attack. We betray our people if we sit and wait, knowing that Byzantium will again encroach upon the lives and lands of our people. Constantine is instigating our neighbors against us, and even within our borders, he is the cause of the unrest that is everywhere. Constantinople is a wound in our hearts and a hole in our ranks, an invitation to crusaders in the midst of our territories. What I say is the truth. How can we allow Constantine's evil and aggression while he is surrounded by Ottoman lands? He led the Venetians to occupy the Chanakali Fort, which links the Aegean to the Marmara Sea. So now we must go by land from the Anatolia Fort to Manasia, not by sea past Chanakali. But when both shores were under our control, we allowed even the Venetians to pass without restrictions. Now we will build a fort on the Bosphorus across from the Anatolia Fort built by my grandfather, and we will place cannons to fire from both shores so no ships can pass without our permission, returning control of our waterways to us. My father wanted to build such a fort, but couldn't. Now its construction is our responsibility. Ahem, <clears throat> ahem.
You wish to speak, Khalil Pasha? Sir, you imply that you intend to conquer Constantinople. But if Byzantium hears of this plan, they will call for another crusade. Uh, perhaps we should postpone the building of this fortress. We will build this fortress, and we will refuse to be humiliated or to live in fear of Byzantium or Constantine or any crusader. If our enemies are plotting against us, our inaction will not stop them. We cannot sit down in the face of their aggression and oppression. We must have faith in our cause and act honorably to protect our trust. For now, we must gather the best builders, masons and carpenters, and a massive force of laborers. We will complete the fort in three months, inshallah. And regain control of the strait. Oh, Constantinople. Constantinople. The city of my dreams. Constantinople truth and justice will come to your borders. Soon we will put an end to the difficult days which you have witnessed and the pains which you have borne. Soon you will see a new dawn. Soon you will see a new dawn. And all that awakens returns to God. wooden planks. Place them side by side. You over there, speed up the work. Oh, Sultan, the messengers have arrived. Shall we bring them to you? They're at the bottom of this hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very well, bring them. going? Isn't this the Sultan's quarters? We haven't come to speak to the foreman. Come this way and we shall meet the Sultan. So, if we stop the construction of this fortress, your Emperor is willing to rescind his request pertaining to my Uncle Oran, correct? Oh, messengers. For your information, we are building this fortress to protect our nation from your aggression. By unity with the Hungarians, you prevented my father from crossing into Romani. We have not forgotten those ominous days we had in the past, and surely your emperor remembers that through this action you forced my father to seek help from the Genoans. At that time, the Muslims of this area were astonished. Thereupon, my father made a resolution to build a fortress in this area. I have renewed my father's resolution, and I have begun executing it. Remember, the Anatolian coast belongs to us because its inhabitants are Muslims, and the Romilly coast also belongs to us, since you cannot guarantee protection for its inhabitants. Therefore, tell your emperor you have no right and no power to intervene in the construction of this fortress. Now I will allow you to go. But I will not allow you to stand before me a second time and make the type of demands you have just made. If you do so in the future, be assured we will not show you the same hospitality. Instead, we will treat you as enemies.
Is that you, O Sultan? Even we couldn't recognize you. Come on, we mustn't waste time. Sultan Muhammad was intent on knowing about all that went on inside Constantinople. He employed men within its walls to convey to him everything that took place. He would secretly meet with these men whenever the need arose. Oh, Sultan, our men are guarding the doors now. They have arranged everything and are anxiously awaiting your arrival. I need to meet with our brothers inside. I would like to confirm certain information with them personally. Master, uh, the walls appear large when viewed from the sea, don't they? <laughs> then we will scale the walls from the land. It will be easier. everything people say about it. Oh, Sultan! The inhabitants of Constantinople are oppressed by their ruler. Meanwhile, the Venetians, the Serbs, and the Hungarians are all trying to gain influence and divide it among themselves. Through pressure from the Vatican, the Catholics have become active to wipe out Orthodox Christianity, but only days ago there was a grand ceremony to unite them. By order of Constantine and the Vatican. In reality, many of the Orthodox clergy are suffering at the hands of the Catholics, and the citizens are reacting to this. When the Orthodox Patriarch Lucas Tatatus was in Constantinople, he said, I prefer to see the Ottoman turban here than the cap of the Catholics. We may need these agitators to work with us, Korosdada, especially if we lay siege. Peace be with you. <laughs> What do you think? Alhamdulillah, Sultan. The more we advance in the construction, the more its beauty and magnificence becomes visible. It will indeed be a great structure when we are finished. Yes, Inshallah. I agree. Khalil Pasha, are you convinced that construction can be completed within three months? Or do you still think it will take three years to complete this fortress? I pray that God will help us to use this fortress to protect the peace and justice of our Ottoman nation. Master, your sheikh has arrived accompanied by a Byzantine man. Never keep my sheikh waiting. Yes, sir. Please come aboard. Follow me. Assalamu alaikum, Sultan. I introduce to you Laskinids, one of the learned men of the Byzantines. Wa alaikum assalam. Greetings to you both. He is offering you this clock of his own making. Oh. As a gift. Sit down. 
Both of you. How are you? How are the people of Constantinople? Are they still afraid of this fortress? It is not so much the people, sir. They have nothing to lose. The Emperor and his advisors are the ones who are truly afraid. In the history of the city, the people have never witnessed such oppression as they have faced under Constantine. They live in misery and hardship. Constantine doesn't offer the least bit of regard for the people. We see your justice and equity from afar. Old Sultan Mohammed, the people of Constantinople greatly admire you for this. Our justice comes from our faith and the principles of Islam. I assure you that the doors of the empire are always open to people of knowledge and science. I thank you, sir. It was a pleasure speaking to you. As a matter of fact, I do not want to return to Constantinople at all. Do you have any experience in smelting? We need help in the manufacture of cannons. I cannot help with that, but my friend Orban would be perfect. Unfortunately, he's been imprisoned. Do you think he'd be willing to work with us? Surely he would, but he's been sentenced for a very long, long time. Hmm? I think we can shorten his sentence. By the spring of 1452, the fort of Romilly was completed across from the fort of Anatolia, giving the Muslims control of the strategic Bosphorus Strait and paving the way for the conquest of Constantinople. And now, my sheikh, what do you think of our new fortress? As you know, your opinion means a great deal to us. Without doubt, much effort has been exerted. Why, three months ago, this area was barren rocks, except for a few trees. A short while ago, I was thinking how Allah has bestowed mankind with this power. You have created, O Sultan, a huge work that will remain, insha'Allah, until the Day of Judgment. I pray that God is pleased with you. and with everyone who participated in this effort. transfer to you, my son, the sword, the throne, and a proud legacy of upholding the trust of those we govern. Now it is you, Muhammad, who must remain faithful to that trust and strive to establish peace and justice throughout the lands. O mighty walls of Constantinople, O walls of oppression, we will liberate your city and bring an end to your injustice. should be done this way, sir. But couldn't you smelt it in one piece, as I've shown in the diagram? Mm, let it be a separate base, and then we will attach it later on. Fine, but ensure that it's solid enough to maintain its accuracy. Oh, Sultan, I believe the calculations you have made are correct. The large cannon you have described here will be quite appropriate. Until this day, however, I would never have dreamed that a cannon of 8-inch radius would be possible. From now on, plan on producing a cannon 12 inches in radius. <gasps> Why, Sultan, you could fit a man inside a cannon that large. And do you know what that means, Musli? 
With cannons that large, the walls and fortress of Constantinople will easily be destroyed by our artillery. Sultan Muhammad knew that producing the cannons he envisioned would be decisive, either in encouraging Constantinople to surrender or in opening the path for its conquest. So he devised an intricate plan to free Orban the cannon maker from his prison in the city. To prepare for this plan, the Sultan sent his men to learn all they could about the prison. We've measured the distance between the moat and the wall, the width of the wall, and the distance between the wall and the prison. These measurements have been noted with extreme precision. Of course. And how will you conceal your digging? Well, first the sand will be spread on the ground between the bushes near the mouth of the tunnel. When we reach the moat, we will empty the sand into the water. Good. Then we will begin digging the main tunnel under the moat. Remember, we must be extremely precise with our measurements because the cell we need to reach is very small. Stop talking now. Get some sleep. Much work awaits us tomorrow, and it's getting very late. Please, God, curse them and make this my last breakfast in this wretched place. Huh? Is that them? But they have come this far. The sound is very close. They're under my feet. Succeeded. Orban, Orban, 
on. Can you hear us? Are you there? Yes, yes, I can. I can hear you. Hey, what's going on in there? Orban, are you there? Yes, I hear you. You're in the right place. Orban, what's that noise from your cell? What's going on in there? Hey, why is your bed in the middle of the floor? It's nothing, nothing. I was merely cleaning the room, sir. Mm. Speak. Eh? What's going on? Ooh. Get out of my way. Let us see, Moosley, how this eight-inch cannon will perform. As for you, skillful Orban, we must hurry now and not lose time. Prepare a mold for the large cannon so that we may begin conducting tests. I will create an immense cannon with a radius of 12 inches. However, the casting shall be vertical. I will need many men for this task. Is everything in order? 
Yes, my master. Then let us begin in God's name. Get set! One, two, three, fire! Let's check again back there. I don't believe the cannonball could have come all this distance. I'm sure it must have fallen somewhere in this area. I'm sure of it. Where could he be going? It couldn't have gone that far. Could it? <gasps> hey, I see where it landed. Follow me, follow me. <gasps> Look oh. at it! <gasps> it has made a huge hole! Look for yourself! Incredible! This cannon won't just destroy walls, it could destroy anything! Imagine if we had just a few of these cannons. The walls of Constantinople will cease to be of significance. No fortress on Earth can withstand such cannons. Oh, brave soldiers, you remember one year ago, we vowed to build the Fort of Romilly. Our leaders said at that time that fortifying Romilly was a step towards controlling Constantinople. Knowing that great challenges lay ahead of us, we took the precaution of strengthening our forces, most importantly by the manufacture of the largest cannons the world has ever seen. We did not announce our intentions. Instead, we waited to see if the Byzantine attitudes would change. But Constantinople made it clear that they would always instigate trouble against us and try to unify our enemies to persuade them to destroy us. After witnessing their plotting and being forced to respond to it, our course has become clear. Logic and justice tell us, gentlemen, that we don't have to wait for the enemy to attack us when their plan is obvious. We must take the lead and act before them. My dear officers and brave soldiers, I have gathered you here on this day because we have no other choice. I am sure that you will follow me on this course in defense of our people and our faith. We must not hesitate. We must rise to the challenge of this battle. We must conquer Constantinople and bring peace and security to our lands. If we do not complete this mission, we are not worthy of this nation, nor are we deserving of this trust. If Constantinople doesn't join our nation, we leave an open wound in our side and invite our downfall. We must not delay any longer, or else Byzantium will benefit. Now we must focus all our energies and finish our preparations. The time has come for our attack. Be assured that the end of the Byzantine Empire is near. Though they are arrogant in threatening us, know that the Byzantines doubt their own strength. You respected elders, you energetic youth, you will be the ones to liberate, protect, and honor Constantinople, to bring a new life to this city and purify it. We will bring to the city knowledge and learning. It will become a center of scholarship for all religions under the peace and justice of Islam. We must pray to Allah to make us steadfast and righteous and unwavering in our resolve. O oh Allah, guide us to bring peace and prosperity to this city. O oh Almighty Allah, let the opening of the doors of this city be by our hands and let us be among the victorious or among the martyrs. O oh Lord of the world, help us to invite men to the word of truth and to raise high the banner of Islam.
In the spring of 1453, Sultan Muhammad and the Ottoman Muslim armies completed their final preparations and began their journey on the road to Constantinople. Do you see anything on the horizon? No. No, I don't see anything at all, my friend. What are you doing? Why are you sealing up the entrance? What? <laughs> Have you not heard the news or are you just plain stupid? News? What news? <laughs> <laughs> it seems as this poor villager has just woken up, eh? <laughs> are the Muslims coming? <laughs> well, it isn't the Romans who are coming, old man. The Sultan's troops have been gathering in Adrena for weeks, my friend. What village are you from, old man? From Petri. Petri, eh? Huh? It must be in the middle of the forest if its people don't know what goes on in the world around them. Is the number of approaching Muslims very large? I doubt anyone would try to conquer Constantinople with just ten soldiers. Come on, old man, don't waste time. Go and find yourself an open entrance before they're all closed. Mm. Or else you'll be spending the night outside. Oh. Go in that direction, and look for the fourth door on the west side. It might still be open. <sighs> what should I do? Should I go and inform the villagers? Of course. I'll, I'll go and inform the villagers. Or should I find the door first, then inform the villagers? Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> if you continue to hesitate like that, you'll lose both the door and the villagers. <laughs> And if you continue to waste time like this, we'll never finish our task. Get back to work. This entrance must be secured by nightfall. Oh, fine. Hand me another block. To further fortify their city, the Byzantines extended a massive iron chain across the mouth of the Golden Horn, the gulf inside the city of Constantinople. When the chain was raised, Ottomans could not enter, and ships in the harbor were safe. But if the chain was lowered, Muslim ships could enter the city and launch an attack from within. You must pull harder! Harder!
coming! They're coming! The Muslim army is approaching! Hurry, to the battlements! Can you see anything yet? Are they really coming? Uh, I can't see anything on the horizon yet. We'll look harder. <laughs> Sultan Mohammed has truly gathered all of his power for attack. Hmm. Do not talk like this, Alexei. You are beginning to worry me. Now don't be afraid. I'm not afraid, Emperor. I know that these walls will protect us. I'm sure the Muslims will be weak in the face of our defenses. Whatever their number is. Yes, you are right, Alexei. They will never overcome these walls. Sarija Pasha, tell me exactly what you have seen, because my instructions will be precise. The troops are ready. The artillery already in position. The enemy's morale is low, and ours is high. We are ready to fight just as soon as you give the command. When Mahmud Pasha arrives, we will send him to Emperor Constantine. Mahmud Pasha, we must again offer Constantine a chance for peaceful surrender. But he is known to be stubborn. If he rejects it, then the first cannon shots will be fired after Fajr prayer tomorrow. Perhaps that alone will convince them to surrender. I hope so, Sultan. And I pray to Allah that you can convince him with all of your skillful diplomacy. Inshallah. Oh, Allah. Guide Constantine to realize the strength of our army and show him the way to peaceful surrender. Amin, Ya Allah. Leave now. We must know Constantine's decision before nightfall. Sultan Muhammad II, son of Sultan Murad II, to Constantine XI, Emperor of Constantinople. First, if you surrender the city without fighting, there shall be no harm or loss of wealth and human casualties. Otherwise, know that we have surrounded the city, and our army is positioned to attack. Second, I have sent to you Mahmud Pasha, and he has full authority to negotiate with you regarding all issues, including the terms of your surrender. <laughs> Does Sultan Muhammad really believe what he has written there? Hmm? 
Sultan Muhammad is convinced. And so are the thousands of soldiers gathered in front of your walls. <laughs> then it seems, Alexei, that Muhammad still hasn't grown up. Muhammad's father and his forefathers also stood before these walls, but they were never able to overcome the strength of our city's defenses. <laughs> Your people must be mad, thinking our city is surrounded by just a garden fence. <laughs> I don't mean to insult you, Emperor, but clearly you have forgotten some very important details. First, no army this large and this strong has ever stood in front of the walls of Constantinople. Second, Constantinople has never been this weak before. Sultan Muhammad knows you cannot gather enough soldiers to fight against us. He also knows that the people of the city are oppressed and their morale is low. And third, the huge cannons that the Ottoman government possesses need 50 pair of oxen to pull them. You have seen these yourself, and the people of the city must also see them every day. <laughs> Even if your walls were twice as large, you would not be able to resist these cannons. <laughs> Is that so, Mahmoud Pasha? Now let me show you something. <laughs> Come this way. These trenches surrounding Constantinople, do you have any idea how wide they are, Mahmoud Pasha? Yes, they're exactly 30 feet wide. Huh? Hmm. Well, I, I, do you know how deep they are, hmm? At their lowest point, 12 feet. Hmm. You probably also know that the thickness of the outer wall is 12 feet and the inner wall is 18 feet. Hmm. And I suppose, Mahmoud Pasha, you know their height as well, huh, do you? Rest assured, sir, we have already done this research. Then how can you hope to overcome them? What will you depend you on? You forget the strength of our mighty cannons, Emperor. Even your Sultan doesn't believe in these cannons. Otherwise, why are there so many naval ships in the strait? Even though it's blocked by chains. <laughs> are they there to go fishing or do they just like the view from the water? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, sir, I did not come to talk about the height of your walls, or the view from the water, or who in our army likes to go fishing. Then tell us, why have you come, Mahmoud Pasha? I came to say that the army of Constantinople has no refuge and no escape. I have come to warn you about the strength of the army that surrounds you. Their numbers and their state of mental and physical readiness far surpasses anything Constantinople has to offer. Sultan Muhammad does not want to insult you. He has brought such a massive force so that you may honorably surrender. He loves Constantinople, and he does not want to destroy it. <laughs> and is this how you show your love? If you truly love Constantinople, you would surrender the city in the face of such a massive force. And you can be sure that the residents of Constantinople will not encounter the slightest harm or injustice. Sultan Mohammed is still prepared to negotiate a peaceful surrender and give you all the necessary guarantees and assurances. Otherwise, we'll attack. I don't want to think about that. Constantinople and its people don't deserve that. You do them injustice if you choose to fight us. I shall leave now. There is no blame on us after this. We obeyed the orders of our true religion and have offered you all peace. You have until tomorrow to accept. Otherwise, the cannons will fire at sunrise. Assalamu alaikum.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh Allah, you are peace and you bestow peace. You are the glorified, almighty, the most high. Sultan Muhammad continued to bombard Constantinople's walls for days to weaken the morale of its soldiers before initiating the infantry's attack. Listen, Zagnos Pasha. You must secure the fort from this side. The area of the gulf up to the wooden door is under your trust. Do not engage them in any combat. Hold your position without fighting. You must build some type of bridge that will make the walls more accessible from the gulf. But we will discuss this in detail later. Now speak, Sarija Pasha. O oh, Sultan, for six days we have been shelling the walls. Now they are all but destroyed. But the troops are losing patience. They want to attack. Not yet. The shelling must continue for ten days, as we decided, because our ground preparations are not complete. Oh, Sultan! We've just received the word. Three Venetian warships are approaching us from the Marmara Sea. Hmm. Then it must be reinforcements. They must not reach the chain to enter the Gulf. Quickly, convey this message to Balta Olu. He must intercept and destroy them before they come near the Gulf. But you must not leave the chain unguarded.
land on this shore instead of going to the Gulf. Perhaps, but this might be a trick. Yes. And they are still approaching. What should we do then, sir? We must guard the shore. Turn the helms to starboard! Hurry! Hurry! Move it! Finally! The south of winds we haven't been waiting for. Quickly open the sails! Open the sails! Open the sails! Open the top sails! Prepare yourselves, they think we are ahead for the land! Now turn and head for the Gulf! Head for the Gulf! They're retreating! They're returning to the open sea! Using huge sails on their ships. Their speed has increased. What do you think? Could our boats catch up and force them to surrender? I don't know, but if they had come to land, we would have captured them. Move quickly! They might use their lead and turn toward the chain! They have the winds behind them. Don't let them get away! Sooner we will enter the gulf, but be prepared! Saved at last! We're saved! Reinforcements are finally here! Now drag the helms of the ships to the gulf! To the gulf directly! They have a fallen for our ploy as expected! We haven't succeeded! We haven't succeeded! I don't think the Muslims will be able to catch them at all now! But look, look, there are some ships guarding the harbor entrance! Ah, oh, those ships are weak! Even if they catch the Venetians, the Muslims cannot face the Venetian warships! <laughs> just three ships with our entire fleet? Baltalo! Baltalo, why did you stop? Catch their ships! Stop them now! Don't let them into the gulf! Stop them! Stop them! The Emperor wants to know if you blow in the chain. You're the tenth person to ask me that. We've lowered it! Suleiman Balzohulu, it was only three ships that confronted you. What would you have done if the entire fleet had arrived? But it was the south wind, sir. The south winds. The south winds. Did the winds force you to leave the chain unguarded? We have been set back greatly by this. Constantinople was about to surrender. But now their morale is high. Thanks to you. Now, they will resist longer. Paltolu, I hereby relieve you of your command. You will stand trial for your failure. 
Saeed Hamza, you are in command of the Navy now. I will not tolerate any more mistakes. Your first duty is to find a way into the Gulf and to burn those three ships behind the chain. <sighs> oh, leaders, is there no way of getting past this chain? Whoever has a plan, come forward and tell us. Oh, Sultan, I Let me finish. A... Whatever we try, it must be unique, something that has never been attempted before. If our ships can't cross this chain, then we must find a way to enter the Gulf even if overland. Listen to me. We have very little time, and we must not give the enemy another opportunity to regroup their forces. Said Hamza, we will begin preparations immediately. This operation must be executed no later than tomorrow night. Sultan Muhammad devised a plan that is recognized as one of the greatest military feats in history. The Muslim army cleared a path through the mountains surrounding the city. On this path, soldiers laid tracks of greased timbers, upon which oxen and men pulled the entire Muslim navy into Constantinople's Gulf, thus circumventing the great chain that until then had protected it. smoke coming from? The Muslims have entered the harbor! The Muslim ships are in 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 the harbor! The Venetian ships are burning! The Muslims have entered the harbor. Have they burnt all the ships? Two of them are almost destroyed. How were they able to break through the chain? The chain's still in place. Then how did they enter the harbor? <laughs> did they all fly over the top of the chain? No, not over the chain, over the mountain, on that path of wooden planks to the other shore. Are you joking? Could they have pulled their ships over a mountain? Mm -hmm. Watch out! The Muslim ships are getting ready to attack again! Prepare the cannons for firing! The enemy is approaching! Take aim and shoot! Allahu Akbar! All praise is due to Allah! Attack! 
ended the first infantry battle in this war with no conclusive result. Sultan Muhammad and his army continued to blockade Constantinople, fighting by day and resting by night. They laid siege in this manner until 53 days had passed. My dear respected elders, honorable leaders, O oh, brave and steadfast Muslim soldiers, I pray that you listen to me as never before. I did not gather you here to discuss the mistakes that we made in the past. I have gathered you here to tell you that we are in need of every brave and strong-willed man to rise to the challenge of the struggle. Because, O oh strong soldiers, tomorrow, inshallah, we will launch our final and decisive attack with the help of God. You know that the city we seek to conquer is surrounded by a mountain of fortification. Opening this city has been no easy task. At times it has seemed impossible. But we will penetrate these walls. This is our most primary goal. After you break through the walls, danger awaits you, undoubtedly. But when we face danger, my brothers, we must remember the rewards of struggle and martyrdom. Are we ready to accept these rewards? <laughs> Following 53 long days of siege, the trenches of this city have been cleared, and the walls have been battered from all three sides. Entering the city has been made easy for us. But still, we have not been successful in our penetration. Thus far, we have waged war by day and rested by night. But unfortunately, this has also allowed our enemy to rest. 
So tomorrow we will begin a relentless struggle, fighting day and night until we are victorious. Oh, Allah, give us the victory you have promised to those who fight in your cause. Make us the vessels by which your word and your justice is spread throughout the land. Oh, soldiers, tomorrow we will join together as a solid, unstoppable force. By the blessing of Allah, we will fight day and night. And within a few days, we will be victorious. Soldiers, Allah reminds us in the Quran, say not of those who are slain in the way of Allah, they are dead. No, they are living, though you perceive it not. And remember, Allah also says about the enemies of righteousness, fight them until there is no more tumult or oppression, until justice and faith in God prevail throughout the land. But if they cease to fight you, Allah sees all that you do, so do not fight them. us that another favor that he will bestow is help from Allah and a speedy victory. So give glad tidings to the believers. Fire the cannons! By the blessing of Allah, attack! God is great! soldier. He is Abu Bati Hassan. <laughs> Victory is ours by the grace of God.
All thanks is due to you, O Allah. On May 29, 1453, Sultan Muhammad II entered Constantinople a hero. After this day, he was known as Al-Fateh, the conqueror. The people of Constantinople greeted his magnificent procession with flowers and songs of joy. He guaranteed safety, security, and well-being for their persons and their property. He commanded his troops not to treat anyone with injustice. After entering the city, Sultan Muhammad al-Fateh first visited the Hagia Sophia, which he had admired from afar for so long. Within its beautiful and majestic walls, he offered a prayer of thanks for the deliverance and victory from Allah. Sultan Muhammad ordered that whatever had been destroyed of Constantinople's walls be rebuilt. And he established just government and protection for all its citizens, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. After its conquest, the city was made the capital of the Ottoman Empire and renamed Islambul, the city of Islam. During the rule of Sultan Muhammad, the city again rose to greatness and became a world-renowned center for science, art, religion, and scholarship. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah. Hello, Allah, Allah. 